can you be a woman in your 50s and still wear a full face of Walmart makeup and look good? That's the question. Last week, I went rummaging through everything Walmart had to offer to see exactly what I was going to need to pull this look together. From puffy eyes to cheek contours and blush to some beautiful eyeshadow palettes, I'm going to be using some brands that I've never used before and others that I'm very familiar with. There's so many cool looking palettes here. I really don't know which one to choose because I have no idea how these products are going to work. Several people have told me that these butter glosses are amazing. So I'm going to grab one of those as well as a lip liner that I think will match. And let's jump right into this now. I have been eating soy sauce for days and I have the biggest puffy eyes ever. So when I saw these caffeine patches for under your eyes, I was like, I have to try these. I left them on for 15 minutes and I was really, really excited that they actually did their job. My puffy eyes were definitely not as puffy. I found this Neutrogena SPF 50 and it was only about $11 for a three ounce container. So I thought that was pretty good. And what I really liked about it is that it says it's an oil-free sunscreen SPF 50, which I love. And most importantly, maybe besides the SPF is that it won't cause breakouts. It's also oxybenzone free. And I always wear this right up under my eyes. And then I take a little bit over the top of my lid as well, just not too close to the lash line. The Maybelline Superstay Active Wear 30 Hour Foundation is by far my absolute favorite Walmart brand. And they were selling it right at $7. If that's not cool enough for you, how about this? It's transfer water and sweat resistant. Not to mention good for all skin types. Before I get to those really cool eyeshadow palettes, I have got to have a primer for my eyelids to keep my makeup from creasing up. So I found this one by Revlon and I was very much attracted to the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Pressed Powder. Anything that mentions blurring is going to be a friend to me. So far I was in my comfort zone until I hit this contour and blush palette, which I really didn't know what to expect. These are about $3 and they're by Revolution, a brand I am not familiar with at all, but they had a lot of really cool looking palettes. The powders in this palette feel really nice and soft and creamy. The only thing I really didn't care for was that the blush actually had a shimmer to it. And with those shimmers, depending on where the light hits, it will actually, you know, look very beautiful and glowy. But if you don't want to look glowy in some places, you have to be careful of where you put those shimmers. Moving right along to our lip liner. I chose one of the NYX lip liners and I'm just gonna quickly line those. Now don't worry about colors and everything. I'll have everything typed up for you in the description and also in the first pinned comment as soon as I post the video. There will also be direct links to products, but those links will lead to Amazon because I'm an Amazon affiliate and it's one of the ways that I earn a little bit of money from my channel. You do not have to buy from those links. They're merely there for your convenience. Now to my friends who told me about this butter gloss and how wonderful it was, you were right. Now let's check out this first palette that I got by Revolution. And I'm just gonna use that sort of cream color all over my lid. Then I'm gonna grab that dark brown there and I'm going to apply it just sort of in stamping motions like the letter C on my eyelid. I love it when you can use three whole dollars and buy a little eye palette, I think it's great. And I was kind of surprised that this was as pigmented as it was. The only problem I really had was with blending. And honestly, it didn't do a terrible blending job, but it was definitely lacking. So what I ended up doing was just grabbing some of the lighter color and applying it over the darker color to help it sort of blend in. And I did feel like I had to do quite a bit of extra blending to actually make this work, but it did work. So now I'm just going in and darkening that up again because I kind of blended it to oblivion. I think if I only had three or four dollars and I wanted to get a small eyeshadow palette, I would get those e.l.f. bite size palettes instead. They're more pigmented and I feel like they blend a little bit better. 
Now, if you have very hooded eyes and it's a problem with your eyeliner, then try this. I'm using the e.l.f. No Budge Retractable Eyeliner. It's waterproof and it's very highly pigmented. And what you do is you just go up under your lash line and you work that through the lashes. Keep working from underneath until you have a slim liner line. Look at that. Then it doesn't matter how hooded your eye is. To take this a step further, we're going to get some of that black from the other eyeshadow palette that I bought. And we're going to use a slanted eyeliner brush. And we're just going to very carefully stick right to our lash line and darken that up just a little bit. It's just barely going to be on there. And if you have a steady hand, you can use a little bit of setting spray on that brush before you dip it in the black and then put it on more like a wet eyeliner. Let's jump into these Ardell lashes and we're going to use that Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive with them. And before I put these on, I need to apply some mascara to my eyelashes because my eyelashes are brown and the false eyelashes are black. So if I want them to look seamless, I'm going to have to just barely color mine black. Now then we can get to the trimming of the lashes. You really need to compare the lash up to your eye to see exactly how long you want it to be. And then you want to trim off the excess from the longest part. Then I like to add a tiny bit of lash glue on my lash line and also on the lash itself and allow them both to dry and then just plunk it on. Once they're on, if necessary, you can pick them up a little bit and adjust them and then you're just going to crimp them together to make them sort of blend with your natural lashes, which can be done with fingers or that tool. I really wanted to play in the purple today, so I just took a little bit and I tried it under my eyes to see how it looked. It was cute, but I don't think it really showed up on camera very well. But then I grabbed some of that kind of orangey yellow and placed it just on my inner eye to kind of make my eye color pop, which it did. And that's a little trick. If you take a close look at your eyes and you have those little different flecks or different colors within the main color of your eye, usually those colors applied around your eyes are going to be amazing. I'd like to move on to concealer, but I can't find the one I bought. So instead, I decided to use this cream highlighter that I got from LA Colors. And while I was applying this, I was thinking, this is really gorgeous. Why don't I use this all the time instead of concealer? but it's a little glowy. And so you have to be careful, like we were talking about earlier, if you have all the that shimmer, it can work for you or against you, so you have to be really careful. And I really felt like I just lucked up on this looking good, and I'm gonna show you here in a little bit what it looks like in the regular daylight. But first, we have to sculpt a brow from scratch. And most of you who are getting to know me know that I love to use my brow stamp, but today we're going to do it the old fashioned way. First, we're going to put those marks down so we know exactly where the brows are supposed to begin, where the arch is supposed to go, and where the tail should end. These are just simple marks starting from the side of the nose straight up, then from the side of the nose through the iris, and then from the side of the nostril and up through the corner of the eye. Once those are on, we can go ahead and put our scaffolding in. Now in the area that runs closest to the nose and to the arch, my lower and upper lines are basically going to be almost completely parallel, but they're going to taper toward each other as we get to the arch. The thickness of your brow in this area is determined by whatever you naturally have for brow hairs already. Then the section from the arch to the tail is just going to be shaped like a long, slender triangle. Now, of course, those are just guidelines to get you going if you don't know what shapes or what you're going for. I encourage you to try different things to see what you like best. And don't be afraid of making mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. You're supposed to make mistakes. That's how you make corrections and get better. Remember that photo I said in natural light? There it is. Isn't it odd how different each side of my face looks with and without the brow? Now I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so we can get that other brow done quickly. And lo and behold, I found my concealer. Now I'll be honest, I really don't like the e.l.f. camo concealer under my eyes. But I do love it 
for under my brows, and for sharpening up features on my face. Well, my friend, it's that time. I hope you enjoyed my video on the Walmart makeup for over 50s. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.